Now, as Black Friday and the holiday season comes near, a creative way a local group is trying to be environmentally friendly. And the Gophers and Badgers are set for a collision course next week, the latest on the Big Ten West race. Plus, it's the start of deer hunting season, and the DNR has one reminder you might not be thinking about. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining News 3 Now at 6. I'm Amanda Quintana. People in the United States spent a total of $12.7 billion on gift wrap in 2017. That's according to a recent report from Sundale Research. Some of that gift wrap cannot be recycled. Gabriela Becerra is in now to share how one local group is finding different ways to wrap holiday gifts this year. This year, instead of buying rolls of wrapping paper, gift bags, and tissue paper, Zero Waste Madison is using crafty items from around their homes and thrift stores to present holiday gifts to family and friends. I have a little pampered chef present for a cousin. Scraps of fabric. These are just scraps I had laying around. Yarn, twine, and even dried fruit. Fold up some of your fabric ahead of time. Are the materials Allison Roth is using to wrap her gifts this holiday season. Froshiki, it's a Japanese art of um, both wrapping but also kind of wrapping things that you can carry them easily. Zero Waste Madison is reducing the amount of gift wrap, such as wrapping paper, gift bags, and tissue paper people use. Part of Zero Waste is not using um, materials that you kind of don't need, and gift wrap is one of those. Some of which isn't even recyclable. The best way to deal with that is to reduce it. They are finding alternative ways to use the scraps of wrapping paper that might be left over. I would definitely save those, um, and you can maybe just make them into little bands around the gift. I like to take those, like those strips you're talking about and just wrap it around the middle of the gift, or you can even cut them up and make little bows with them. And these zero waste items. I plan to use them every year. Can be used over and over again. This year I just have scraps. I'm thinking about slowly investing in kind of like Christmas fabrics to be my Christmas fabrics. And these could be like birthday fabrics or something like that. Zero Waste Madison says even the gift on the inside can be environment friendly. For example, buying used items or things made out of recycled materials. All right. Thank you so much, Gabby. Let's get a look at your first alert weather with Dave Caulfield. Dave, that sunshine today felt great. Yeah, we did not waste that sunshine this afternoon, Amanda, with temperatures in the mid 40s for many of us for highs. Let's take a look at our high temperatures on this Saturday. 40 in Watertown, 44 in Madison and in Lone Rock and 46 in Boscobel. Right now looking at uh, mostly clear skies in Madison on the Edgewater Skycam. Currently at 37 degrees with a wind chill of about 32. Some other temperatures, 36 in Janesville right now and in Watertown, 35 in Lone Rock, 33 in Baroqua, and 37 in Platteville. We'll see those temperatures fall through the low 30s, briefly touch the upper 20s to start off tomorrow. And then after we get some partly sunny skies during the afternoon, could have some clouds move in by the evening. They shouldn't produce any rain or snow. Highs tomorrow in the mid 40s once again. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll talk about this mild and dry weather continuing for the next couple of days and the threat of some rain and snow Tuesday and Wednesday in your first alert forecast. All right, Dave, thank you. The Badgers are hosting Purdue this afternoon at Camp Randall and look like they're on their way to their ninth win of the season. Jonathan Taylor has a 51 yard touchdown and over 200 yards on the day. A Badgers win sets up a winner take all game next Saturday against Minnesota in Minneapolis. We'll recap all of today's action at Camp Randall and around the Big Ten coming up later in sports. One of the biggest stories in college football today came in New Haven, Connecticut. Students at the Harvard Yale game caused a 48 minute delay at the start of the second quarter after more than 150 people stormed the field with signs protesting climate change and demanding the colleges stop funding fossil fuel companies. Plays peacefully escorted protesters off the field while some asked to be arrested. More local news now. A 62 year old man is dead after he was pinned inside his Toyota during a head on crash last night. The chief deputy from the Rock County Sheriff's Office says the crash happened around 6 o'clock last night on West Highway 81 near West Beloit Newark Road in the town of Avon. The deputy 
says the man driving the Toyota was trying to pass another car when he hit a red Mazda SUV head on. The 20 year old driver of that SUV suffered serious injuries and is now in a Janesville hospital. The sheriff's department is still investigating this crash and waiting to release the driver's name until his family is notified. A federal report shows that Wisconsin's job growth dropped dramatically in the first half of this year, although economists say there's little cause for concern. The U.S. Department of Labor says the state had nearly 3 million non-farm jobs through June, up almost 10,000 from the same period last year. That lagged behind the year-over-year -year increases for every June since the recession ended a decade ago. But economists say that is due to low unemployment, currently 3.3% three percent in Wisconsin. Curbside leaf and yard waste pickup in Madison is done for 2019. City officials say residents should not put yard waste on their curbs for pickup for the rest of the season. Instead, people are instructed to drop yard waste off at the streets division drop off site. Officials can guarantee another can gar cannot guarantee another round of collection this year because of the likelihood of another winter event. But if weather allows, crews will do another leaf and yard waste collection. House Democrats held five days of impeachment hearings and are preparing for the next phase in the inquiry. President Trump tweeted this morning about Senator Adam Schiff, who led the proceedings on Capitol Hill. ABC News' Kenneth Craig has the latest. After five days of impeachment hearings wrapped up this week, President Trump says he doesn't think House Democrats will impeach him. The president tweeted, Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff will be compelled to testify should the Democrats decide to go forward with the impeachment hoax. During a surprise visit Saturday to U.S. troops at an air base in Iraq, Vice President Mike Pence suggested the inquiry has gotten in the way of other congressional duties. You all know that partisan politics and endless investigations have slowed things down a bit in Washington, D.C. The inquiry focuses on whether President Trump tried to pressure Ukraine's president and whether he held up hundreds of millions in security funds to make Kiev investigate a potential Democratic rival, Joe Biden. The former vice president shared his thoughts in an interview on CNN. I believe he should be impeached and have the Senate try whether or not they are high crimes and misdemeanors that would cause him to be thrown out of office. That's a decision for them to make. I hope they have the courage. First, the House Intelligence Committee would have to issue a report with its findings and recommendations. Next, the report is sent to the Judiciary Committee and released to the public. Then more hearings could be held, and if the Judiciary panel decides impeachment is warranted, it would draft articles for a full House vote. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. If the House impeaches, the Senate would have a choice, either dismiss the charges or hold an impeachment trial. Potential 2020 rival Michael Bloomberg is spending a ton of money gearing up for the primary season. The former New York mayor has reportedly spent $30 million on TV ads in one week. More than almost all his potential Democratic rivals spent in a year combined. The New York Times says the 60-second ads will run next week in 29 states across the country. But in an interview today, Bloomberg's chief advisor said the billionaire will not accept political donations if he runs for president and will not take a salary if he wins. Authorities in California say the fast action of school officials may have prevented a school shooting. On Thursday, police arrested a 13-year-old who had an apparent hit list, map of the school, and access to a semi-automatic rifle. The boy reportedly planned the shooting for yesterday at his Los Angeles high school. Subject also had in his possession a rudimentary hand-drawn map of the school, as well as a list containing names of both students and staff members from the school. Investigators don't know who owns the unregistered AR-15 seized at the student's home, but the 13-year-old and an adult relative are both in custody. His arrest comes just one week after a 16-year-old student at Saugus High School just north of L.A. opened fire on five of his classmates. The nine-day deer hunting season in Wisconsin starts today. State wardens as well as local law enforcement are reminding hunters to keep some safety measures in mind. The DNR says a late harvest has farmers out later than usual, adding another layer of danger. Tonight on News 3 Now at 10, we'll hear from a father and son hunter as they attempt to carefully kick off the season. 
Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, spreading the holiday spirit this season, how a local organization is making sure every kid has a present, but even more than that, feels included. Welcome back. Kids and their parents are giving away Christmas gifts today while learning messages of bullying prevention. Project My Neighborhood hosted Toys for Tots in Middleton. Anyone who brought a gift was welcome to join in on the fun of Battle Blaster with Nerf guns. Project My Neighborhood co-founder Matt Nelson gave pep talks before each round of the game and incorporated lessons the nonprofit teaches like leadership, inclusivity, and intervention methods to stop bullying. The organization wants to make sure that everyone is always included. Really the beauty of this is anybody of any mental or physical disability is able to play in our games. We've had as young as two to over 80 play and we've, we've had uh, four generations play in a single event. Moving forward, Project My Neighborhood will continue to host similar events and plans to have a physical activity to play along with it. People are also in the holiday spirit at Brew City Crafters Mad City Holiday Bazaar. It started as a fair with 15 vendors, but seven years later has expanded to have more than 100. The Milwaukee-based organization began with a brother and sister duo who were continuing their family's art legacy. Now the organization is giving back to the community by donating half of all admission fees to a good cause. Donations from this weekend's bazaar will go to the Alzheimer's Association. The fair runs until tomorrow night at the Alliance. Energy Center. Still to come on News 3 Now at 6. After six months on the square, the farmer's market is heading inside for the winter. And speaking of winter, some winter weather could be on the way just in time for pre-Thanksgiving travel. We'll talk about the updates to the forecast in just a few minutes.
As winter approaches, the Dane County Farmers Market is moving indoors for its holiday market. Today was the season's first holiday market at the Monona Terrace. Farmers from the summer markets are returning to the indoor one, but new vendors are also coming in as well. You can still find vegetables and some fruits, but many vendors are selling in-season winter items like cheese, cranberries, and wreaths. For many, the holiday market is a way to keep business going and continue customer to producer relationships from summer. It's all the regulars. It's, I know, I've known half the people that have purchased for me today. They're the same people from the outdoor market. We, uh, the, people like coming to this market. Everybody's cool. It's a, it's a great market. Lots of people who have a lot to share, both like customers who like know about the produce they're buying and the people who grow it as well. It's just so neat to talk to like every step of the process of like getting food. The market will continue through December 21st and then move to the Garver Feed Mill, but there will be no market next Saturday. Let's get a look at your first alert weather with Dave Caulfield. Well, Dave, we're talking about going inside. You know what that means. It's getting colder. Yeah, although today wasn't too bad, Amanda, with mild temperatures in the 40s, plenty of sunshine. That mild weather marches on for Sunday and Monday. It should be pretty quiet in the weather department, and that's nice because we'll need it to get ready for what happens uh, a little bit closer to Thanksgiving. So some snow and rain possible late Tuesday into Wednesday morning. We're watching that system closely because it still has a lot of uncertainty associated with it and looking a little bit colder by the time we get to Thanksgiving and into the shopping weekend ahead. Live looking Madison on the WIC TV sky cam at those clear skies. Today's high 44 degrees, about five degrees above normal for this time of year. So we jumped up about 10 degrees compared to our highs yesterday. 40 the high in Watertown, 42 in Monroe and in Platteville, 46 in Boscobel. So over the next couple of days, we stay mild into Sunday and Monday a little bit uh, ahead of where we should be for this time of year. But then those 30s do return and we're pretty close to normal into the Thanksgiving holiday. Does look like as we get into the beginning of December that those temperatures are a little bit on the chilly side. On future track, we're pretty quiet as far as cloud cover goes. We'll call it partly cloudy skies to start off Sunday. Briefly dipping into the upper 20s. We'll be in the mid 40s as we get into Sunday and Monday for highs. And even though we will have some periods of clouds throughout the next 24 to 48 hours. Don't think those clouds will produce any rain or snow that changes though as we get into Tuesday. Here's what we know right now. This storm nearby on Tuesday it looks in the latest model runs to be a little bit later on Tuesday into Wednesday morning, so there could be some impacts during that time frame in in terms of travel that is and this is a pretty fast moving system so it gets out of here quickly. Here's what we still don't know and I share your frustration with this system. It's been a very frustrating storm. The exact path of this storm that matters a lot because it really will determine whether or not that we see rain or snow or maybe a mixture of both at times, and that will also impact our snow total. So I want to show you the latest models here and what they are saying. So the, the uh, European model is painting a mostly rain setup. I remember yesterday I was talking about this system. It looked like it was a cold setup today more flip flopping with our models. So this is the frustrating part of this, mainly rain uh, showing up on the European model and could be heavy rain at times. And the GFS model, usually a little bit colder, is still painting rain to start. And then at the very end on Wednesday morning could see some uh, wraparound snow. So as far as snow totals go, rain totals, everything, when it comes to impacts, we're still watching that system. I do think that we'll see a little bit more clarity though as we get into tomorrow.